Okay, I'm Jamie Gorrell from Action Coach Business Coaching. My passion is helping small businesses grow. It started when I grew up with business owner parents that worked really, really hard just to pay the mortgage. And they told me, you know what, Jamie? The people that are doing better than us, they're lucky. They're lucky. So I grew up with, with that particular thought. And when I found out, actually, it's not to do with luck, it's to do with knowledge and knowing how to do it, I got really excited. I wanted to help people like them. They're retired now, I can't help them, so I'm really, really passionate about helping other people. And what I'm going to show you tonight is a model that I use to help grow businesses. Now, there's six steps, and if you go through all six steps, you have a business that works without you. What that basically means, you could ring your business now and say, I'm going away for three months with no internet or phone, and you'll come back to a thriving business. Does everyone, anyone think that's uh, a total dream? Yeah. Okay. It's possible and it's been done. How long does this take to unpick? <laughs> Three to five years. Oh. Depending on how, how hard you are. But you need to really want to do it. So, but it, you'll get results at each step. To give an example, step one, I've got a client that's halfway through step one. His profit has gone up by 50% in three months. Who here would like 50% growth in three months? Okay. I'll be showing you how I did it today. And I'm happy to take your questions on through. Is there anything specific to your business you'd like to know? I'll, I'll tell you. I'm happy to be interactive. I don't like just talking. I like other people to talk as well. Um, there's a business I worked with for six years. We went up to the four, four steps. And that helped me turn them from a £6 million loss to £1.5 million profit. And that was changing every department. Okay. Who here wants to see these six steps? Yep. Yeah. Who here wants to get the most out this evening so they've got things to take away with them that they can implement in their business and make a difference? Anyone? Okay. The best way to do that, I'm going to give you a handout that you will work through as we go go through the evening, so you've got something to take away. So, who here needs a pen or a pencil? Could you need a pen or a pencil? Okay. I'm going to pass this round. If you need your pen and pencil, can you just take one? And uh, I'm, also going to, I'm also going to pass the handouts round. So there's two handouts. The first one is what we're talking about. The second one is, I'd like you to rate me at the end so I can get some feedback to know how to be better next time. Um, however good I'll, I'll be today, I always look to be better. That's just how I, how I am. So I appreciate if you would take the time to be at the end. So if you'd like to take one and pass it on, that'd be greatly appreciated. Well, when you've all got one, I'll start and I'll take you through the six steps to a better business. I've got one here, just in case I forget. Does anyone else need a... The pencil's gone. Does anyone else need a pencil? There's a rubber here in case you get it wrong. Is anyone else missing either paper or a pencil? No? Has everyone got? Okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take you through what these steps are, and I want you to be really honest with yourself. The more honest you are, the better you'll do in the next three years. As you can see, under each box, there's a, it's got the number 10. You've got to rate yourself out of 10. Now, if you have a low number, that's not something to be, be, to be disappointed with at all. Anyone tell me why that is? Because you can only improve. Brilliant. Yeah. Any other comments on that? If you've got 2 out of 10... It might not be relevant going on at all. <laughs> You're aware of it. <laughs> okay. You have an amazing opportunity that if you make that higher, what's going to happen to your business? Get better. Get better. Yeah. So it shows you, if I do that a lot better, I'm going to make more money and work less hours. So it should be an opportunity to say, you know, I know it now. That's, that's a really good point. I know it now, so I can do it now. Okay. So here you've got six steps. And they're meant to be done more or less in order. 
and there's a reason for it, and I'm going to ask you later on why that is, and I'll, and, uh, I'll welcome some feedback. Okay, the first step at the bottom, you see there's four of them, and we categorise them under the heading of mastery. What that means is, mastery is getting yourself in control. Have you ever met a business owner, and it might be you, who spends their entire life fighting fires. They go from one problem to the next problem to the next problem. It could be a staff problem, a stock problem, or whatever. Anyone, have met anyone that does that? Okay, at least one person. You can be honest, it's fine. I've met, I've met loads, I've met loads. Okay, once we do mastery, 95% of that goes away. There's a cause, there's a reason why that is. There's a reason. And if you know what it is, you can fix it. At least 95%, we're all human, etc, etc. So, and people just doing mastery do better. More money, less hours. So I'm going to take you through, what is mastery? What do I have to do to get that done? Okay, the first thing is, bottom left hand corner, destination mastery. So remember, I want you to listen to say, well, I want to rate myself honestly. Destination mastery is, why am I in business? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing it? Now, a lot of business owners I speak to say, I need something to pay the mortgage, and this does it. So in their mind, their, in their mind is, I do this to pay the mortgage. What do you think they'll always just do, and never better, if they've got that mindset? What do you think? Just cover the expenses. Yeah, they'll always do that. And they'll always blame something else on why they're not better. I told you about my parents. They're not lucky enough to have a better business. So, they just pay the mortgage. Every year. Some months a bit below, some months a bit higher. So, because their mindset was, that's why they're there. You know, got bills to pay, got a house, whatever, a bit of holiday, could do so, never mind. Now I'm going to show you how powerful, if you think differently, you can be better. There was a survey done, Harvard Business School, 1979. They tracked all of the students for 10 years. And they found three per, the top 3% of the highest earners 10 years later had 10 times the wealth of the rest of the class. Were they the highest academic achievers? No. Anyone tell me what they did differently to the rest? Jacqueline. I know what they did. Yeah. Jacqueline, what, what did they do? We actually asked them to write down what their aims and ambitions and targets were at the beginning when they started studying. And only that 3% that actually mapped their success were the ones that uh, out-succeeded all the others. Brilliant. So kind of Fantastic. Amazing. What that's saying is, and there's many studies done on this, if you know where you want to be in five years, and you write it down, and sometimes the process of writing it down will get clarity on it, it will help you fill in the gaps. So they wrote down what they wanted, and this is personal to start with. What's your drive? What's your passion? Do you want that beach life in Hawaii? Do you want to be the best optician in North London? Do you want to make crafts that rich people come 80 miles to buy? What's going to make you the happiest person alive? And sometimes that can take a year to get to. <coughs> be really honest with it. What would make you the happiest? If I said to you, right, you can give you anything you want in five years. Tell me what it is. And there's a path to get there. There's hard work. But if you know by doing it, it's going to get you here, you will knock down the walls, you'll do things you don't want to do, and, and when you've got a bad day, knowing that you're going to get there is going to pick you up. I'll give you an example. Bill Gates in the 70s had a passion, very different to most people, not everyone has this passion. He said, I want a PC on every desk. Who remembers the 70s and what PCs were like? Okay. Now, what were they like, PCs in the 70s? I think what, 80s. You're 80s, yeah. you're very young. Giant, giant piece of machine. Okay. It was a whole room. Okay. So, he was telling an audience that this massive thing that malfunctioned every 30 seconds cost 10 grand. You needed a degree in all sorts of things to use it. We'll be on every desk. What reaction do you think he got? Oh, crazy. Okay. So, do you think he had some bad days getting there? Has he got there? Yes. He was his passion. He totally wanted it. He knocked down doors. He, he, when, when the whole room was telling him he's an idiot, he still got up and fight for it. 
Because he knew what it was, he wrote it down, he drove to it. Every day he looked at what he wanted and he drove and he drove and he drove. If you do that, you will get there. Because it will drive you in your darkest day. What is your thing? Write it down. And have a think about it and discuss it with, you know, what's driving you? Is it a personal thing? Some people say to me, I want to see my daughter every, I want to be in Australia every six months to see my daughter. Some people say they want to be in the biggest whatever. Some people say all sorts of things. What's yours? And whatever it is, it's fine. No one has to, has to think it's a good thing. It has to be your thing. I want to work with one business in every industry. That's mine. If I meet someone I've not worked with before, an industry I've not worked with before, I get really passionate about it. I want to learn a new industry. I get that, that drives me. There's a few personal goals as well I've got, but that's one of the key things on business. Every industry. When I'm 85, there's a new industry, I want to try and work with them. They probably wouldn't go near me, but I'll try really hard. That's what drives me. I like new industries. So on Destination Mastery, I've told you what it is. So to get a 10, you'd say to me, right, Jamie, I've got a dream board of all the things I want in five years, which I look at every day on the wall, and I've got a little, very top-level plan on kind of how, what I need to happen in my business to get that. I don't necessarily know how to do it, but it's written down, I can show it to you. If you've got that, you are a 10. If you've never thought about it in your life, you are zero. Which gives you what? An opportunity for growth. Now you know how. You know what drives people. One of the traits of successful people, they've got clarity on what they want. So has everyone rated themselves out of 10, honestly? Okay. We're going to move on now. Okay. That's fair enough. What else do we need to do to be better? Okay, so the next one I look at is financial, bottom right hand corner. That's basically measuring where you are now. If you, has anyone driven the car and not, never looked at the dashboard when they've driven? Never looked at it. Almost like put a big slipper on it, I don't, don't need to see that. Anyone done that? My wife does. Okay, excellent. And, uh, and how happy is your insurance company? Excellent. If you don't record what you're doing in your business, it's like driving without looking at the dashboard. You've got no idea where you are, you've got no idea on what you can improve. The people that fight the most fires act that way. Their idea will keep in control is to look at their bank balance every day and that's it. I've got that to spend, I'll spend it. It's not difficult, it takes some discipline. So effectively, so what do you need to do? There's a few things there. One of the things I always talk about is, do you know your bank balance in three months? And have you got a very simple way of working out what that is? You can do it in a simple spreadsheet. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. But have you got something so you can plan and make you think about all the things? So you can do things of interest, like if you're going to take on a staff, when are you going to take them on? Um, when they're going to, how long are they going to take to learn the job to pay for themselves, etc., etc.? Because what people do that don't do this, they avoid doing things that do drive. So effectively, say to yourself, okay, have I got at least a cash flow? Money in, money out, month by month, week by week. So in three months, I know there's a problem, I can do something about it now, rather than shit, I've got no money. Lots of people do that, you know, panic mode, panic, panic. Which means they're, what they like to customers when they're like that. Yeah. Sure. But if they're planned three months, and those are probably in three months, they've got time to deal with it. How are they then going to be like? Anyone? Yeah, more relaxed, better. More in control. You look at it, it's all on a piece of paper. The problem's three months, and I've got a little bit some ideas by actually doing this exercise what to do. There's also got their monthly PL month on balance sheet, which is, again, working out how you're doing. Um, break even. Who knows they break even? Who knows? How much they need to take when all their costs are covered? Who knows that number every day? Excellent, fantastic, well done. Lots of people don't. So that's, that's a good start. It's a good start. KPIs. Who knows what a KPI is? Who like, who'd like to share share with everyone what a KPI is? Thank you. Uh, key performance indicators. What we're looking at here is a more detailed, lower level definition of objective so that you can tell that you're getting closer to your objective. So it's Excellent. like stepping stones towards the objective. Excellent. Excellent. Which should be smart. Sure. The objectives of which should Brilliant. be smart and should link to your vision. Brilliant. Very, very good. Oh, well, okay. Very good. <laughs> Kay is going to do the rest of the sound. <laughs> <laughs>
Very good. Very, very good. And should be summarised. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> KPIs. Basically, if you're on the, you went on the beach, and uh, I said to you, okay, I'm only going to give you 15 <coughs> numbers on your business. You can't contact me. I'm going to give you 15 numbers. I'm going to give you this week, last week, this time last year. What are those numbers? And you look at them, and you go, you know what? I know everything I need to know. That's what KPIs are. What are those numbers? It will tell you where the opportunities are. It will tell you where the problems are that are about to be massive in three months, you don't fix them. I'll give an example. One of the best ones I like to do is sales KPIs. So if you're someone that, that books appointments, you can have this week, and you can have next week, and then there's last week here and all the other weeks. So if you know that the number of appointments for all your sales team, or just you if you're on your own, number of appointments is normally five, and, um, and number of new clients is one. Um, and then next week, you know you've already booked ten. You can have a good guess. You know what? How many do you think I might, clients I might get this week if my conversion rate is the same? Two. Two, great. And if you know what's going on for you and your sales team, you've got an idea. Now suddenly, if suddenly... Um, Next week, it was 10, and it was 6. What would you do next? That happened. Yeah, find out why. Find out why. Really quickly. What's the reason why that might have happened? You get a better amount of points. Yeah. It, yeah, good. Yeah, get a better amount of points. And also, what, what else has gone up? Conversion. Conversion, okay. So, why? So, number of points that's gone up could have been for what reason? Marketing. Yeah, could, you could have done some more marketing. Made a Facebook page. Yeah, or oh, whatever, yeah, through Edge, yeah. Okay. okay. So a number of things, but what's really, what's really important is to find out why. And it could be a number of important. It might be that you've got six different marketing things going on. So it's really important to know which one is for the spike. And if once you find that out, say for instance it was a new foot drop last week, that's the thing, reason why you got more appointments, what would you do next? Do that. Yeah. Excellent. And if there's a few things not working that well, what would you do to them? Stop them. Stop them, right. Review them. Yeah, review them. Yeah, review them. And make a decision. What, and what decision would you make after you reviewed them? Well, you just tell me how, what the outcome was. So what yeah, decision yeah. I'd make. Sure. Either change it or dump it. Headline wrong, etc. etc. What do you think the process of just recording it and getting everyone in your business to record it does? Nothing. Sorry? Nothing? It keeps you organised. Yeah. yeah. Just recording. Just recording them keeps you focused. So if a salesperson knows he's meeting you on a Friday, he's got to turn up those numbers, and he's got not many appointments on a Tuesday, what's he going to do the next three days? Get appointments. Yeah, absolutely hammer the phones. Because he knows he's got to report them to you. And if, and if the conversion rate's higher, why could that be? Because we've gone from... 20% 20, 20 to 60% there. Better appointments. Yeah, more okay. qualified leads. Maybe more consistent. Excellent. Well, they are able to plan as well, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So if it's clear and sure. it, then they can make more appointments. To All good points. Sometimes, one of your salesmen you've just hired is great. And what, if you find that, what's the next best thing you can do? Once someone's doing better than everyone else. I don't know what he's doing. Brilliant. Yeah, we'll see what you're doing differently. Brilliantly, and then what? Send your stuff out with them. Okay. Or record the calls and play it. Have an information sharing meeting and reward the guy that's doing well. And what message does that give to everyone else? Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a culture of knowledge sharing and champions. These things make a massive difference. You do nothing else. The guy I helped grow 50% in three months, two things. One was, record these numbers and report them to me, and we literally brainstorm everything, and we worked out that sales conversion through sales training was needed. That's it. Just did that. Just did that. A one-man business, like a lot of you. So he only controlled his own activity. Yeah, but I, I made him do it, yeah. and report to me, and then okay. just did, literally go through his week, every week. Mm -hmm. Every week, go through his week. Just did that. Just did that. Uh, every week for, no, forever. 
Uh, I've been with him nine months now. Okay. So, uh, and he's, he's uh, but it's just the discipline of doing it. And it focuses your mind. You do it every day and at the end of the week as well. That's why. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Can I ask, an um, opportunity, we, we do opportunity as well, so how much? Okay. I find that um, some of my staff aren't very good at that. <laughs> you know, like, it, it is quite a skill to be able to forecast right. Okay. But don't use the brain. I do, I do. I think, I think, is it possible that this process could be made simpler? Yeah. Yeah, you could have a worst case, best case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you could say... Up, you think, what do you think we're getting doing? better at it. Um, yeah, yeah. And the forecast will never be right. It's all about having a logical way. For instance, last year's number plus 10% of it was some good marketing. Mm. Or last year's number. So just something that's logical and maybe potentially give them some tips on how to work it out. And what's really good, it comes from them, how more motivated will they be to try and strive for it? Yeah, do you think it will make a difference? Will they try and meet your forecast more than their forecast rather than yours? I'm just going to start, I mean, I, it, it isn't something that occurred to me, but I've, I've worked hundreds of years in the corporate world okay. with numbers. Okay. And, and every day or every week I'd be reporting numbers to somebody yeah. and I'd have people reporting numbers to me. And I don't, now I'm running my own business, I don't have anybody to report the numbers to. Sure. I have them, and I'll mark, I will mark myself quite highly down in this category because I have all my forecasts, yeah. I have all my plans, I know exactly where it's going. But I don't have to report it to anybody, and that's a very good point. And I yeah. think uh, if I take anything out of it, if I just go back and even like that scary wife I mentioned, you know, if I, <laughs> if, I, if, I if I say to her, these are, these are my targets, this is what I've got to do. You know, come on, come on Thursday, I'm going to think. She, I've got to tell her tomorrow. She's, you know, and she needs to buy into it and say, well, why haven't, why, why hasn't that happened? And it is just having yeah. somebody to report it to. I report to two people. Very good point. My wife and my coach. If I didn't do that, my productivity would definitely be less. Yeah. I'm quite low motivated, but there's a big difference when you're writing out. By blimey, that wasn't as good as I thought it. It sounded good, you know, had some great conversations, but actually, what happened? Really good point, thank you for that. Any other points on this? It's very bad what you just said about the wife and the coach because I'm self employed, I'm a one man outfit. Yeah. I don't self contract. Um, and it's true, I can turn around and oh, say, I've got no work this weekend. She'll say, Get your finger out. It's quite simple, yeah, quite yeah. basic, but it does make a difference. It's a great point, but no work this week. <laughs> but how good would it be if you said, This is my prediction for the next three months, mm. and this is what I'm doing to get the business? I know I do weddings, I'm speaking to bridal shops to get a referral, I know I do the mitzvahs, I'm, I'm contacting local synagogue to find out the new mitzvahs in the next three months. So it's funny, what are you doing, not for this week, because this week's too late, three months time, because you arrive at Nickel Baby this next week, it's, three months ago is when you should be doing something about it. So if you do this fine in advance, it will go, one minute, what am I doing three months time? Tomorrow, next week's too late, you're done, you're stuffed. So this is what this does. So um, this is financial mastery. Out of 10, give yourself a rating. You've now got the tools to make it better. So if it's low, don't worry. You can be excited now. This is, by doing this, you'll be better. I'm sure I've got no work. I'll be deaf by the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> say to you, 10 appointments, cancel them. They crack the lounge. Is there Five minutes? OK. I better be a lot quicker then. OK, so... So I'm just going to quickly whiz through a few other things. So the other thing to really look at is, next thing we do is time. How, do you ever look at your time, do you spend during the week and say, okay, how much of it was doing stuff that, that didn't help my business at all? Arguing with a client you should never have taken on in the first place. Um, do it, playing around with Facebook. <laughs> Okay. Or doing stuff that you could pay someone a minimum wage to do to free yourself up to get more customers. Okay. So out of 10, 10 is I'm really efficient, I've got 20% of my week devoted to business growth, and the rest of doing it. It's under time. Time. Time.
So how much have you, you know, have you got the right proportion between business growth activity, doing stuff, and stuff that actually doesn't relate to anything at all relating to your business, if you get distracted? And that includes dealing with the wrong clients that, give, that you're argue with day in day out and you should just bin them. Yeah? So be really honest about that. Delivery, I'll just train this one like this. If I run like every one of your customers, how confident are you if there's anything they wasn't happy with you'd know about? Ten means I've got a process that proves that. Zero is I haven't. When I, when I normally ask that to business owners, what do you think they say? What's their next statement? Yes, I'm fine because they, my customers never complain. Never complain. And what do you think I say to that when they say that? They might not complain to you. Yeah. How many times have you been to a restaurant, did not the food and didn't complain? Never. Does that restaurant know? The, the best answer I had where I almost fell off my chair was one of my clients said to me, I'm a removal business. After every job, the client fills in a questionnaire and then two weeks later I ring them to check that nothing's broken in two weeks. So what did I score them out of ten for that? That particular thing. Yeah. After coming after coming off the floor after falling off my chair, I scored it quite highly because I was actually I was expecting the I don't complain. He shows me the files of all the jobs in the past week. He still got them. Brilliant. Score yourself out of ten. Delivery. Ten is I've got a process that proves without doubt I know everything. Zero is I haven't got a clue. Be really honest. Because once you get that right, when you grow, you're not growing a bad service that you don't know about. Well, so that's mastery. Does anyone want any questions on why you need to do that first before doing, spending money on marketing to grow the business? If you didn't do that first, what might happen to you? If you didn't know what you're going, if you didn't know customers are happy, if you're spending the time on the wrong things, what would happen if you started getting more... Yeah. Quickly. Yeah. You, people go bankrupt that way? People kill themselves in too many hours, doing the hours and the wrong things. Happens. Bad health. Yeah. So in the, in the one second I've got left... Okay, what niche is it's marketing? It's doing marketing. Basically, how are you different from the crowd? How can you not compete on price? Um, how do you get more leads? How do you convert them better? How do you get people spending more? The easiest one to do on that is... Anyone tell me? To increase the average, the average uh, sale, the easiest thing to do to increase your average sale <coughs> you get. Put the price up. Perfect. Put the prices up. 90 at a time doesn't make a difference. Really? How do you get? Yeah. Most people, most people in the shop, they do it and there's no, they lose some of the bad customers, the one they argue with two days a week. They go. The one else stays, that's fine. Number of transactions. How do you get people coming back? Does everyone know everything you sell? How many people have got some web designers here that do social media? How many of them might need a Facebook page or whatever and never been asked? Easy stuff. Margin. Um, if you go to your bookkeeper and say, right, try not my cost by 10%, there's a bonus for doing so, how many times do you think they'll find something? Okay. Ask, how do you stop putting your prices down because other people are cheaper? Show more you're different to them. Right. You're different to them. We did it with a plumber once. We said to a plugger, uh, put your prices up and we're going to show you how to get more money. So how are you going to do that? Speak to people in your industry and find out what they hate. What do people hate about plumbers? They're late. They don't, they don't get out of wear clothes that fit them. They're messy. <laughs> that's, what, that's what they said. Guess what the advert we said, the advert we put on was? We guarantee... Interesting. Nice button. <laughs> right, anyway, he's going a bit far now. We guarantee the following. We will be on time. Our staff will wear clothes that fit them. Hang on a few laughs. And we won't be messy. If we are, labour costs is 50% up. Their profits went up by 40%. Because price wasn't the issue. They were different to all the other plumbers. And none of them, ha none of them had, were brave enough to match them. They were different. What is different about you to every other web designer? In your marketing, show that you're different and try and guarantee something. They guaranteed something. But the, those customers that are, are solely cost driven, in my experience, aren't the ones that you want anyway. Exactly. Brilliant point. Brilliant point. Find, find what you, how you're different to someone else. And if you don't know, ask your customers why they come to you. They'll tell you how you're different. 
Then find a way of getting more of them. That's the very the 20 second answer. <coughs> Any other questions on that? Our business is getting very, very competitive, the cleaning person. Yeah. And, um, I don't answer the, the calls, but my office staff found it very difficult now to people who keep asking for discounts and somebody else is offering them, you know, oh, we can book this for okay. a cheaper price. And it really, we found it happened in the last year. Mm. Been running the business for 14 years. Yeah. It's never happened, and that's why we need to, we keep giving giving discounts. And probably I can listen to you guys just to to keep to a certain amount. Sure, of sure. Clients. Can, can I help you with that? Yeah. How are you different to other cleaning companies? Well, to, to tell you that we are credited. Some clients don't want to hear that they want just prices. Okay. They, they just stop that. Okay. What do people much. What do people not like about the cleaning industry at the moment? What they don't like. Yeah. Ask your customers what they don't like about the cleaning industry okay. and guarantee that won't be you and not cross. Let me example my own example of cleaning. Someone guarantees me someone turning up every week on time yeah. and does a good job, yeah. I'll pay extra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No one's done that. If you do that, what's going to your business? We do we do that do you get, is that in your marketing? We guarantee that if they don't turn up, you're going to get half price next time. You've got some marketing that says that really prominently. Okay. So an example, I'm not saying use that, I'm trying to illustrate. If, you're, if you do something that no one else does, people won't, won't compare the prices to you. Does anyone go to a Ferrari showroom and say, I've seen a car down the road, can you match their price? It's a Ford. <laughs> <laughs> They're both cars. <laughs> Why are you doing it? Why are you, why are you 80 grand? 20? I'll go and get the Ford. How are you the Ferrari in your industry? You all are Ferraris, you need to know what it is. Ask your customers. Sorry? It's because of what you know. Yeah, yeah. But, and put it in your marketing. Put it on your website. You're different because, in the headline. If you do that, what's down to your business? Explode. Yeah? And if people try and compete on price, what do you do to them? Send them to your competitors. There you go, have these. They'll be complaining two days a week and won't pay you. I'll deal with these guys. Fine. So that's key things. And there's some other steps here. Leverage is systemisation, which basically means automating what you do so someone else can do it. Then you recruit a team. And then you get to a point where, and then you have a general manager and it's running without you. So that's, that's a real win. Six steps. Any questions on this? Uh, oh, was that too fast? No. The last three. Yeah. Three to five years if you follow these steps. Okay. Three to five years. Now, what I'm offering everyone in the room, I've got a feedback form I'd like to fill out just to give you your thoughts on today. What I'm offering is, you've seen these six steps, but a lot of people want to have it explained for their business specifically. But it's general stuff, and there's 22 people, and it will take yeah. Mill throw me out till we get to in the morning. <laughs> so I'm offering you a two-hour meeting where I'll go through these steps for your business, and we'll do another task, which is we'll look at how the strategies will increase profitability, and what will happen is you'll be telling me how much more money you'll be making from the new things we suggest. Hmm. Gary's had that meeting, and Gary will tell you what he thought of it. <clears throat> I want my jacket on to look more... Presentable. Uh, no, you're, you're, you're right, happy. So, Jamie, I love his energy. He's got lots of energy, yeah. just like me. And we spent an hour and a half, yeah. very generous, of yeah. to spend an hour and a half with me. And I picked up lots of golden nuggets. There were books. You're so well read. So there were books that he recommended to me that I downloaded that really have made me change the way I do things. So definitely book some time with this guy. He's really, really good. So. Thanks, Gary. Can Just I now. ask you, Jamie, are you part of the Gambit's Growth Acceleration Team? I'm not, but I do have programmes that match the same rates. So, but the key thing is, it's a two, free two-hour meeting. Well, you'll be going, we're going through these steps and also the profitability side of things. So you'll take away a how to have a business works without you for you. And yes. If you want me to help you do that, we could talk about it at the end, but if you don't, it's fine. Just all you need to do is tick that box and hand it to me and put your details in. I'm not going to chase anyone ever. Just tick a box. Any, any more questions on anything? 
Or has anyone got some business challenges on, and I'll help them through it any, on any type of topic? Is it okay if we get um, Gary, because Gary does the business challenges? I do. Can you, you can actually both do it together. So. Okay. <laughs> well, for this bit, I like to do the circle. Oh, okay. Well, then. Right. <laughs> well, this is my favourite bit. Do you want to grab that end of the table? 